brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. Over the last week, we've been discussing a lot about heresies and heretics and such. And lately, I've been getting a lot of comments in my, well, comment section from Pope's planers and others who haven't quite waken up to how bad things really are in the church founded on the Rock of Peter. So, we're going to continue this week with St. Vincent of Larens on the, his work, The Combinatory, on development of doctrine in the church, which Francis loves to continually invoke. Except when he's invoking it, he's actually twisting what St. Vincent of Larens says to the point where it's unrecognizably St. Vincent of Larens. Because the doctor of the church that he keeps citing, who I'm going to read to you from here in a moment, says literally the opposite of how Francis tries to use him. So we're going to continue with his work. Like I said, we're almost done with that text, actually. We're getting pretty close to the end. Here he's going to tell us how to detect heretics and heresies. Chapter... 28. In what way, on collating the consentience opinion of the ancient masters, the novelties of heretics may be detected and condemned? A.K.A. In what way can we use the fathers of the church to help us det detect heresies and their errors? And I perceive that, as a necessary sequel to the foregoing, I ought to show by examples in what way, by collating the consentient opinions of the ancient masters, the profane novelties of heretics may be detected and condemned. Yet in the investigation of this ancient consent of the Holy Fathers, we are to bestow our pains not on every minor question of the divine law, but only at all events especially where the rule of faith is concerned. Nor is this way of dealing with heresy to be resorted to always, or in every instance, but only in the case of those heresies which are new and recent and that on their first arising before they have had time to deprave the rules of the ancient faith before they endeavor, while the poison spreads and diffuses itself, to corrupt the writings of the ancients. But heresies already widely diffused and of old standing are by no means to be thus dealt with, seeing that through the lapse of time they have long had opportunity of corrupting the truth. And therefore, as to the more ancient schisms or heresies, we ought either to confute them, if need be, by the sole authority of the scriptures, or at any rate, to shun them as having been already of old convicted and condemned by universal councils of the Catholic priesthood. Therefore, as soon as the corrupting, sh corruption of each mischievous error begins to spread forth and to defend itself by filching certain passages of Scripture and expounding them fraudulently and deceitfully forthwith, the opinions of the ancients in the interpretation of the canons are to be collected, whereby the novelty and consequently the profaneness, whatever it may be, that arises may both without any doubt be exposed and without any to conversation be condemned. But the opinions of those fathers are only to be used for comparison, who living and teaching, holily, wisely, and with constancy in the Catholic faith and in communion, who counted worthy either to die in the faith of Christ or to suffer death happily for Christ, whom yet we are to believe on this condition that that only is to be accounted indubitable, certain, established, which either all or the more, most part have supported and confirmed manifestly, frequently, persistently, in one and the same sense, forming, as it were, a consentient council of doctors, all receiving, holding, handing on the same doctrine. But whatsoever a teacher holds, other than all or contrary to all, be he holy and learned, be he a bishop, be he a confessor, be he a martyr, let that be regarded as a private fancy of his own and be separated from the authority of common, public, general persuasion lest, after the sacrilegious custom of heretics and schismatics, rejecting the ancient truth of the universal creed, we follow, at the utmost peril of our eternal salvation, the newly devised error of one man. Lest anyone perchance sh should rashly think the holy and Catholic consent of these blessed fathers to be despised, the Apostle says in the first epistle to the Corinthians, God hath placed some in the church, first apostles, of whom himself was one, Secondly, prophets, such as Agabus, of whom we read in the Acts of the Apostles. Then doctors, who are now called homilists, expositors, whom the same apostle sometimes calls also prophets, because by them the mysteries of the prophets are opened to the people. Whosoever therefore shall despise these who had their appointment of God in his church in their several times and places, 
when they are unanimous in Christ in the interpretation of some one point of Catholic doctrine, despises not man, but God, from whose unity in the truth, lest any one should vary. The same apostle earnestly protests, I beseech you, brethren, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. But if any one dissent from their unanimous decision, let him listen to the words of the same apostle. God is not the God of dissension, but of peace. That is not of him who departs from the unity of consent, but of those who remain steadfast on the peace of consent. As he continues, I teach in all churches of the saints, that is of Catholics, which churches are therefore churches of the saints, because they continue steadfast in the communion of the faith. And lest anyone, disregarding everyone else, should arrogantly claim to be listened to himself alone, himself alone to be believed, the apostle goes on to say, Did the word of God proceed from you, or did it come to you only? Lest this should be thought lightly spoken, he continues, If any man seem to be a prophet or a spiritual person, let him acknowledge that the things which I write unto you are the Lord's commands. As to which, unless a man be a prophet or a spiritual person, that is, a master in spiritual matters, let him be as observant as possible of impartiality and unity, so as neither to prefer his own opinions to those of every one besides, nor to recede from the belief of the whole body. Which injunction, who, who so ignores, shall be himself ignored. That is, he who either does not learn what he does not know, or treats with contempt what he knows, shall be ignored. That is, shall be deemed unworthy to be ranked of God with those who are united to each other by faith, and equaled with each other by humility, than which I cannot imagine a more terribly evil. That is, however, which, according to the apostles, threatening we see, have befallen Julian the Pelagian, who either neglected to associate himself with the belief of his fellow Christians, or presume to dissociate himself from it. But it is now time to bring forward the exemplification which we promised, where and how the sentences of the Holy Fathers have been collected together, so that in accordance with them, by the decree and authority of a council, the rule of the Church's faith may be settled, which that it may be done the more conveniently. Let this present combinatory end here, so that the remainder which is to follow may be begun from a fresh beginning. What St. Vincent of Larens is saying there is when in these times you should know the writings of the ancient fathers and what the Catholic Church teaches formally through its councils. He talks about leaning on the Catholic priesthood. He's referring there to ecumenical councils. That makes sense. And what that means for us, you know, 16 centuries after he wrote this is we should know the doctors of the church. We should know the church fathers. We should know the Council of Trent, Vatican I the Lateran councils, all of those, when dealing with heresies. Now, of course, this gets complicated in our time when many of these heresies come from men who hold very high offices in the church, sometimes the highest office, in fact. Or when we're talking about a pastoral council, quote-unquote, that conflicts with infallible declarations from non-pastoral but actual ecumenical councils. This, of course, gets complicated. But for most things, when you're hearing a supposed cardinal of the church speaking about how we share the same God with... Uh, other religions, which is heresy, or when you hear about how communion should be given to everybody, regardless if they're in a state of grace or not, you can learn what the church has always taught from the beginning, and you will know the truth. It's pretty straightforward, actually, I think, but maybe I'm wrong. What do you think about that? Do you find that to be pretty easy to go through? We've got a few more chapters of this book left, and I hope to be done with it by February or so, and then we will move on to something else. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to share this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.